if you can do, if God gives you something to do, if you can accomplish it by yourself, then it didn't come from God. Come on. Come on. Man, talk about that. <laughs> God gives us stuff that is big to do, yeah. and it's going to take His help to do it. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you what God has called us to do as a church. Wow. It ain't enough fried chickens in Oklahoma to fry enough chicken to do what God's called us to do. We're going to have to step on faith and believe God for the finances. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have none of those chicken dinners. You know, preachers like chicken. <laughs> but somehow when God calls you to do something, ain't enough chickens in Oklahoma, ain't enough chickens in the state, the whole state. You know, chickens of the nation to fry up to have to finance the vision that God has given us. He's going to have to do it himself. Amen. And if it's God's will, it's his bill. He'll pay for it. Amen. If God has given you a vision, it's his bill. He'll pay for it. That's All you got to do is stand on his word. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Praise God. Y'all hot in here? No. Yeah. Oh, no. You fry chicken up here, it's hot up here. Is that what they call it? It's hot. Well, let's pray. Praise God. I'll be all right. I want y'all to be comfortable. I'll be fine. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. <laughs> we give you glory. Thank you for your word. Father, as we dig into this again, Lord, and I pray that you bring things back to our remembrance, Lord, and I pray that people sitting here today will understand that something they've gone through, it, it's, it's not because they want to be, it's because they've been wounded. And Lord, sometimes those wounds can go deep. And Father, I pray for sensitivity in the name of Jesus because when you begin to, to deal with soul wounds and you begin to deal with inner vows and you begin to deal with these things, Lord, you, you, have, to, you have to have compassion because you're bringing up past hurts. Lord, show us how to do this skillfully because when you begin to bring up hurts, Lord, if it's not done skillfully by the Holy Spirit, sometimes people be are far worse off than when you begin. Yes. So, Lord, I pray for the skill yes. of the Holy Spirit to be with me today. Yes. Lord, I pray for the, 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 the ability to speak a word that brings healing and not damage. Yes. We're not here to damage, Lord. We're here to speak healing. Amen. And, Lord, if a past memory comes up, I pray, Lord, that you deal with it like only you can and bring healing right in in Jesus' name. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give me just a little bit on the volume, just to have, please. Listen, I want to talk to you about this message that God had given me, and, and I brought up the statistics in Oklahoma, the, the Bible Belt, some said that we're almost the bubble of the Bible Belt. We lead the nation at mental illness. But you hardly ever hear a message in church dealing with mental illness. Sometimes the pastor himself dealing with some mental stuff. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Y'all can turn these off. I can already see people getting their coats. Y'all turn these fans off. Thank you. I'm fine up here. But thank you for picking on me. I appreciate it. I sweat when it's five degrees, so don't worry about it. <laughs> but you think back. When was the last time you heard a message dealing with mental illness in the church? Think back, never. Now, those of you that go to this church, you've heard this message several times because I repeat it several times because in your lifetime, you're going to have opportunity to be wounded throughout your life. Baby, if you haven't been wounded, keep living. Come on. It's part of life. But what I try to teach is how to deal with those wounds so they will not become a part of your life. How to deal with it because the Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. He was bruised so you don't have to stay bruised. Amen. He was wounded so you don't have to stay wounded. And, 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 but I'm telling you, sometimes those wounds take on a life of their own. Yes. And people act throughout their lives. And you're wondering, what, why do you act that way? But if you sit down and talk to people and, and learn some of their history and learn, you, you'll begin to discover why they act that way. Amen. If they will tell you. Sometimes people don't even know why they act that way. But this message was birthed out of an encounter I had with a young lady that was diagnosed with 
uh, schizophrenia, bipolar. I mean, she had the, the she had the whole gamut. And a psychiatrist person that I knew said, "Would you talk to her?" And I listen. I don't know anything about that uh, as far as the medical standpoint. And I never tried to tell anybody that I'm a medical doctor or anything or a psychiatrist. Although being a pastor, I think you need to take some studies in psychology, which I have because you deal with all sorts of alphabet soup <laughs> in church. Amen. 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 This alphabet soup over here. Amen. And you start with the letter A right here, but I mean, God's delivered me from so many real challenges and battles, you have no idea. But I, I've taken some course, and there's some things that you, and from a medical standpoint, or the, the, the psyche of a person that you can understand. But how many of you, it goes deeper, and when you begin to deal with some person's soul, mm -hmm. yeah. that soul consists of their mind, their will, and their emotions. Yeah. Now I'm talking about the spirit here. We're talking about the soul. The soul is what relates to other people in this life. Yes. How you relate to this life and relate to people in your mind, your will, and your emotions. Sometimes they can get damaged. Yes, they yes, we have a church full of people that have been wounded in their soul and it encapsulates and it stays there. How many of God never intended for you to make an idol out of your wounds? Amen. Amen. But sometimes people make a shrine of the time that they were wounded and they put it in a and they put it in a time capsule and it stays there until a man of God comes along and exposes that thing and says, Jesus wants you healed in every area of your life, not just in your spiritual life, but also in your soul walk, how you relate to people, your mind, your will, and your emotions. He wants you all the way healed. In fact, he rebuked some prophets in the Old Testament. He said, Because you have slightly healed the wounds of my people. You have slightly healed them and told them they were okay when they were not okay. Amen. I want people to come to TCI, Transformation Church, come wounded and leave wounded. Amen. Come hurt and leave hurt. Yes. Who want that? You could have stayed home Amen. if all you're going to get some entertainment. Amen. Stay home and watch football at 12 noon. <laughs> I know what time they come home. <laughs> Stay home and watch a reroll of friends. Right. I think when you come to the house of God, you might come with some expectation yeah. that whatever's on me gonna fall off of me. Yeah. Yeah. But whatever I'm dealing with, that's gonna be a word spoken. Yeah. That's gonna leap off the pages and not stay the logos of the word, but become rhema in my spirit. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I come to church. Man, when I come to church, I don't come. I don't come for no other reason but to worship God and to hear something that is going to propel me into what God has for me. Yeah. How many of the day is over to come see what Sister so and so got over? Come on, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Day is over to see what Brother Broad. I feel that what Brother Broad, what Brother Brother got on. I can hear that. Yeah. I think if a man pay too much attention to what another dude got on anyway, that's a word. <laughs> I don't care what you got on. Yeah. Just have clothes on, praise God. <laughs> Go to, look, what I forgot to tell you. They sent this young lady to me. Schizophrenia, bipolar, uh, all of these things, she had, she ran together. Hallelujah. <laughs> she ran together. And he said, can, can you talk to her? I said, I'll be happy to. And, and she came in, and you can tell when people deal with mental battles. Yes, most times, many times, they're demonic. But not all the time. We have put a label on everything that we don't understand. We call it a demon. Mm -hmm. yep. right. Everything's not a demon. Right. Some things people are dealing with wounds in their soul that the devil exploits. Yes. But I believe, now this is, this is me. Amen. If Jesus Christ is dwelling in your heart through faith and the Holy Spirit fills your spirit, the devil cannot get in. Your spirit. But he has limited access to your mind. That's why we're told to put the helmet of salvation on. Yes. Yes. And to guard our minds. Because the enemy, how does he come? He comes with those darts, those thoughts. Yes. That's what we're told. To cast them down in the name of Jesus. So he does have limited access to our soulless realm. And that's where he attacked her. I began to talk to her. I said, tell me what happened to you. And, and there will be spurts of coherent conversation, and then there will be spurts of nonsense. One, 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 and one minute she's talking perfect sense. 
Another minute she talked about people running around in her temple and the FBI didn't bug her, you know, back of her head and just total nonsense. But I recognized what that was. I said, what happened to you? And she told me, she said, Pastor, when I was a little girl, my, 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 my daddy, she said, when, when I was a little girl, my daddy would come into my room in the middle of the night while my mother was asleep and, and he would do things to me that I didn't understand. And she said, but since this is my daddy, the person that I, I idolize, and I'm going to tell you, this, the first man that a little girl is supposed to fall in love with is her daddy. Amen. So the one that you're supposed to fall in love with, if he's violating you, don't you know that would mess your mind up? Amen. First man, my, my, my baby girl, she grown now, but the first man she said she wanted to marry was her daddy. Amen. Now she said, I don't want to marry nobody like my daddy. <laughs> And that's when she go end up with somebody just like me. Because I'm a prayer. Amen. Yes. But she said, my daddy would, would touch me and he would do things to me and it progressed and it got worse and worse. And, and she said, well, since this is my daddy, I guess it's right, but it just feels wrong. She knew something was wrong with this. And, and she said, so this is what I did. I told myself to, when he's doing these things to me, told my mind to go somewhere else while he's doing this so that all that's left is my physical body, but I checked out mentally. And if you don't think that's possible, some folk can check out on you and you, you don't even know they don't. Amen. They can be looking right at you, they don't. I know wives have experienced this too many times. They sit there talking to their husband. He checked out 15 minutes ago. <laughs> He ain't listening to what you're saying. All he's hearing is you talking, I'm hearing. And you just saying another, because you know y'all ladies. Y'all detail oriented. We don't care nothing about the details. Tell me what happened, how your day was. Good. That's all we want to know. How was your day? Good. That's it. You say, how was your day? Well, let me tell you, it started this six months this morning. I couldn't find my shoe. I had to change my whole shoe because they didn't know nothing I had on. Then I had to change my outfit. Then I had, listen, we don't care about that, but you listen, but y'all better act like you listen. <laughs> but listen, she said, my, my dad would come in and he would violate me. So I told my mind, go somewhere. And then when he's done, come back. So all she said, Pastor, I really, I have no recollection of what he was doing because I checked out. And she said, something happened to me. I kept doing this as he began to repeatedly abuse me. I kept doing this till I couldn't find my way back. And the Holy Spirit prompted me to go to certain scriptures. And he said, this is what happened to you, and I'm going to show you how to find your way back. Because what the devil wants to do, I want you to know everything God does, the devil has a counterfeit. Yeah. Don't be deceived. The Bible talks about that he, he has apostles, false apostles, yes. false prophets. Yes. He has a temple just like God does. The synagogue of Satan is in the word. Right. So everything God has, the same tries to get a counterfeit. So what God can do, Satan tries to do the same thing, but he uses his evil methods. Yes. The Lord sent me to the scripture. And I want to read you this scripture because this is the foundation right here. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. And show you what happened. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Let's go there real quick. <laughs> Hebrews 4, verse 12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. That's the word of God. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. That lets you know soul and spirit are not the same if they can be divided. People are confused. Talk about the soul is the same as the spirit. No, they're not. The soul belongs to, uh, reacts with your body because whatever your soul does, that's what your body's going to do. But the spirit is different, and the spirit is what God communicates with. Amen. It says, dividing, piercing even unto the dividing of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a deserter of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Don't you know this word 
When you take this word off the page and you digest it in your spirit, this word can get in your bone marrow. Yes. Amen. Yes. Did it say that? Yes. It says, divide your son of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. Now, I take the word literally. I really do. When an author tries to show up, I may have a better author. If you ain't better. You don't want to. Can I get a witness? I, my mother used to talk about Arthur all the time. I said, who is Arthur? She said, oh, Lord, the weather's getting cold. Arthur's starting to show up. I'm going, who is this Arthur? <laughs> Until you saw pushing 60. Yeah. Arthur tried to show up. But I took the word. I said, wait a minute. The Bible says the word will get in my joints yeah. and marrow. Yeah. <laughs> I take the word this. I said, now, I command the word to get in my joints and marrow, and the word will get in your bones. Yeah. That's when you believe the word. Yeah. And I say, Arthur, you can't stay. Can't stay. You can't even visit. No. 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 So, I began to read this scripture to her. And the Holy Spirit began to show me what happened. When she checked out mentally, the Satan tried to do the same thing God does. God takes his word. And God divides soul from spirit. He'll let you know what's of the soul and what's of the spirit. He'll let you know when someone's ministering out of the soul as well or they're ministering out of the spirit. And you can tell many times when you begin to tune into the spirit and check into the word, you can tell when a person's ministering out of the spirit or they're ministering out of the soul. And if you minister out of your soul, it's not going to profit no more. We got too many people ministering out of the soul, out of their mind, out of their will and their emotions. I'm not moved by people's emotions when they mention me. I don't care about calisthenics or none of that because none of that moves me. What moves me is when you minister the word out of your spirit because deep call it to deep and when you minister out of your spirit, it's going to touch my spirit. Yeah. I've seen so much entertainment and calisthenics. I'm not moved by that. Minister to my spirit. Yeah. How do you know when you minister to my spirit? They change. Yeah. You got entertainment for about 45 minutes to an hour. You leave unchanged because you came unchanged, you leave unchanged. And you and this is when you know you've been entertained. What did the preacher preach on today? Girl, I don't know, but it was good. I called him some of my friends. I said, what y'all preach on today? Man, I had a bullet doc. I don't know what you preach on, doc. All these docs ain't nobody got a doc. What you preach on, God? Man, I had him going, that Holy Spirit was moving. I said, what you preach on, God? He couldn't help me. I said, so what you got was entertainment, but nobody walked out transformed by the renewing of their mind. How do you know when you've been in the service? Because the kingdom of God will reveal something you say, I didn't know that. That's right. That's right. I did not know that. That's right. And now that I know that, I can apply it to my life yes. and make a change. Yes. I'll start with the man in the middle. Amen. Amen. I'm going to make a change. Yes. Don't you know when you get saved, it's up to you. Mm -hmm. right. Jesus saved you, but it's up to you whether you're going to walk spiritual or not. Yes. Right. By renewing your mind. Yep. It's up to you. By applying the word of God, by eating the word of God, by digesting the word of God. It's up to you whether you're going to walk in a spiritual life or not. It's up to you. Glory to God. Amen. Listen, I read the scripture. I said, what happened was, the Bible said God is a by soul from spirit. So what Satan does, try to be like God. Try to be like God. He will try to divide soul and spirit, not by the word of God, by, but by trauma and traumatic events. When people have gone through trauma, when people like this little girl, she went through trauma of her father abusing her. When other people have gone through trauma, same time to use that trauma to cause division between the soul and the spirit because you cannot function properly if they're not working together. That's right. Amen. Your soul was designed to work with your spirit. But so many people are motivated and moved by their soul but not moved by the spirit. And don't you know your soul is what contacts this world right here. This is how we deal with, with body and people in this world. We deal with God, our spirit. Yes. Somebody had the other day a uh, very interesting question. Some of you may be wondering. They said, well, Pastor, you talk about the soul of God and the spirit. I got a dog in my house. Does my dog have a soul? 
Get one in here. Anybody ever wanted animals ever sold? Well, the question is, the answer is they do. Animals have a mind. Animals have a will. And they have emotions. But the difference between us and the animals, they say we animals. I, I, I'm not an animal. I'm created in the image of God. Amen. I'm a son of God. Yes. But Rover is an animal. Yes, Rover's soul is tied to his body. So when Rover dies, his soul dies with him. But the, the, the human being, their soul is tied to their spirit. So when the spirit leaves that body, the soul goes with them. But animals have a soul. Your little cat looking at you, trying to figure out, what, and girl, what do you have on? <laughs> That's what they're doing. When your little dog looks at you and told me, girl, if I could just tell you. <laughs> if I could just tell you where you could understand, oh, I would tell you, don't worry that. But your dog would say, but it looks good on you. Yeah. But I wouldn't wear it. <laughs> so the answer is yes, animals do have a soul. But their soul is tied to their bodies. Your soul is tied to your spirit. And when your spirit says it's time to leave this body, your mind, will, emotions goes with it. But while you're on this earth, they can operate independently of themselves, and we can move and motivate from our soul and not our spirit. And your spirit can lay dormant. Your spirit will not be activated because your soul is taking over. You ever say people operate from their soul, their minds, will, and emotions controls them? I don't trust my emotions all the time. I don't because they change. I don't trust my feelings all the time. Don't put too much stake in your feelings because they change. You are the stick with what the word says. Every day I don't feel like what the word says I am, but I believe the word. Amen. The word says I'm healed. Amen. Sometimes stuff try to pop up and let me know I'm not healed, but the word says I'm healed. Amen. The word says I'm the righteous of God in Christ. Amen. Sometimes I may not feel that righteous, but the word says I'm the righteous of God in Christ. Amen. So stick with what the word says and not what you Why feel all the time. How did you feel like coming to church this morning? I didn't feel it, y'all. I, I, I didn't feel it. My body said, you tired. But I got reminded, you're the pastor. You got to go to church. Okay. Listen to this. When a person encounters tragic events, like soldiers, for instance, we got any former soldiers in the house with military people in the back. Thank you. Listen. I talk to soldiers quite often. Many of them experience PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, because of things they've seen. Many of them dealing with it 30 years later because they have not encountered a message like this to let them know that God came to set you free from that. But they have seen things in the military. It don't have to be in the military seen tragic things. Tragic things have happened to the people. But especially soldiers, when they've seen that, this is what happened. Their mind were not designed to see bodies blown apart. The mind was not designed to see that. So when you see that, the mind tries to cope with it the only way it knows, and it tries to escape that situation and, and, and get away from that situation mentally. They can still function, but mentally they have checked out. Yes. So when they come back to the states and when they come back to their home, they deal with this stuff in the best way they can. And many people say, man, they're crazy. <clears throat> but they're not crazy. They've just been wounded in their soul. And the enemy has taken that traumatic event and divided soul from spirit. But God is raising up men and women of God that have an understanding of the word to show you how to bring those things back together. And when the soul and spirit function as it's supposed to, then you will be healed. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Listen to this. First Thessalonians, take the time. First Thessalonians 5 and 23. The word of God says, and the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you know that's three? Your spirit, your whole spirit, your whole soul, and your body. Man is a three-type being, part-time being, just like God. God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Man is spirit, soul, and body, and they all should operate as one. Yes. My spirit should dictate to my soul, and my soul should dictate to my body. Yes. That's how they work together. Amen. Your soul and your body, they work together in tandem, <laughs> but if your soul is not connected to your spirit, are not being influenced by your spirit. How I many of your soul will tell your body to do all kinds of stuff? Amen. 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 Am
I knew I wasn't going to get to the amen from that one. <laughs> Listen to this. Listen very carefully. A wounded soul can cause physical sickness. Yes, yes. 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 Oh, yes. yes, it can. This, I want to say, this is certainly not the reason for all sickness. I'm not saying that. But however, sometimes we can see in our physical bodies a reflection of the condition of our souls. Yes. If you know a person that has been wounded, and I'm talking about wounds, you gotta get you gotta get them dealt with because this is what happens when a person has been wounded, but especially by another person. Uh -huh. How many people can be a trap? Oh, yeah. Yeah. People can mess you up if you don't realize. Yeah. But what happens is you get wounded. Then once you get wounded, then it turns to hurt. And once you get hurt, it turns to bitterness. And if it keeps going, it's going to turn to anger. It's progression. Now fails. If you don't let God deal with that, first you get wounded, then you get hurt, then you get bitter, then you get anger, and then once anger is accomplished, then there's wrath. And how many people have you know walk in anger and sick? Because the doctors will tell you even that kind of anger can cause physical sickness. This is what I've discovered. Many times, when a healing comes for the soul, the physical sickness in the physical body goes away. There are many things that people deal with. If they get their soul healed, the physical body will sometimes come in line with their soul and the sickness goes away. Right. Depression. We're going to talk about many things that let you know that you may have a wounded soul. Depression is one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Depression will go away once you get your soul healed. Because God never designed you to be depressed. Yeah. So, Pastor Cindy, you ever get depressed? Listen, depression tries to come to everybody. Yeah. I just don't let it stay. Right. Yeah. It tries to come to everybody. I just don't let it stay. Because now I realize who I am and what I have in Christ. Depression don't have a chance. Yeah. Depression, listen, anybody ever said hey, that they're in the state of depression? That's one state I don't want to ever live in. <laughs> been to all of them. Only state I ain't been to is Hawaii. I ain't been there, brother. I ain't been there. Amen. Amen. But I've been to every other state in New York, except for Hawaii. Amen. Gotta put that on the list. Amen. Yeah, hit your spirit, that's the other one. But, in Hawaii. but depression is not a state you want to be. Don't even want to visit. Don't even want to pass through it. But depression could be an indication of a soul wound that hadn't been dealt with. A lot of times when I talk about these things, people begin to think. When I start talking about inner vows, people begin to think, have I made an inner vow? And when I begin to show you some of the symptoms, then you can identify, I do that. How many of real deliverance comes when you tell the truth about yourself? I do that. Yeah, I do that. I have spurts of wrath. I do that. But I don't know why I do that. That's why we live. Listen, the day is over, brothers and sisters, for church to be a place of just entertainment. We got too many people messed up in the house. I mean messed up in the house of God. They are messed up in the place where they ought to be delivered. Amen. People are starving to death in the house of bread. Right. This is the house of, this is Bethel, the house of bread. And people are starving where there should be plenty of bread. Amen. That's why I teach the way I do. Long ago, I got over trying to be popular and trying to say, man, that guy, I don't care nothing about that. I want to see every last person walk out delivered whole. Amen. I want to see every first person stand on the word of God and say, I know depression, you can try to come, but I cast that thing down in the name of Jesus. Amen. Then the word of God said, we ought to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. We can't, we can't do the ministry when we all depressed. We all walk around with inner vows and we made and we made in our soul. What kind of, how can we bring deliverance to the world when we will mess up the world? Come on now. I'm just trying to help somebody. Third John chapter 2. <laughs> Why are you 
eternity, I want you to know so there's a connection to the con condition of your soul and the condition of your health and prosperity. There's a connection that takes place between the condition of your, your soul, the condition of your health, and your prosperity. 3 John chapter 2. 3 John 2. 2. Yeah, 3 John 2. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest do what? Prosper. And be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Listen, when your soul get healed, then your prosperity comes into place and you begin to prosper in hell. But until your soul get right. He said, Brother 3 John 2, he said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. As your soul prospers, then your health is going to prosper and everything else about you is going to prosper. But you've got to get your soul right first. And the enemy's job is to keep your soul not right. Your mind, your will, and emotions. Keep them not right. And if they're not right, you're not going to prosper. Amen. And many times people stay sick. Yes. Mm -hmm. Found out when people let stuff go, when people let people go, when yes. people let unforgiveness go, yes. when people let bitterness go, many times also clear up. Yeah. Yes. Stop taking Rolaids. Yeah. Clears up why? Because that stuff was damaging their soul. And when their soul got right, the rest of them got right. I'm going to work. I'm taking a little extra time because I told the Lord to give me some other things to, to minister on this Amen. that I did the first time. Uh, it's going to take me at least three weeks to do this. Uh, all right. Amen. At least. All right. Amen. Listen to this. As a, a, a soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions, your soul is not your spirit. The soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. A soul can become wounded. It can become wounded when people hurt us. It can become wounded when people transgress against us. It can become wounded when we have soul ties. Yep. Right. And soul ties. Yeah. Listen. I mentioned soul ties. When there's a sever in a relationship, yep. everybody bleeds. Yep. And there's a wound yep. that happens when that thing is broken. Yes, That's why I wouldn't immediately, when I minister releasing soul ties, I also minister healing at the same time. Amen. Amen. So people can be healed from that. Yes. Listen to this. When soul ties and when wounds and when all these things happen, the process repeated over and over and over and over, the soul becomes fragmented. Yes. I've met people that fragmented souls, that peace over here, peace over there, peace over here, peace over there, and, 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 and cannot seem to bring it together. Don't you know people, if they could change on their own, they would? Right. Mm -hmm. I believe that wholeheartedly. I believe if people could change on their own, they would. That's why in this last day that we're living in, when the enemy has ramped up his attacks, we need to be in a house of God that will teach the truth and teach you how to come out of things. Because listen, this is not the time. Amen. It's not the time for that. Amen. A fragmented soul can be damaged through trouble, through rejection, through fear. A fragmented soul can be damaged that way. Yes. And that's why I'm teaching this, so that people can understand what's going on with them and change. Amen. That's why I'm doing this. Pastor, you taught this before. This is why I teach it again. Amen. This is why I teach it again. The woundings can happen throughout various stages of your life. Let me ask you a question. Something happened to you, you got healed from it, then something else happened. You got healed from it, then something else happened. Listen, this is the life that we live. If you're dealing with people, yep. you're going to have an opportunity to be wounded all the time. Amen. You have to understand how to get through that. Yep. When you deal with people, and I know we all deal with people, yeah. it's a part of our lives. There's going to be an opportunity to be wounded. That's why I bring this message as often as I do. Why, Pastor, do you keep bringing this message? Because things get repeated over many times. When this happens, parts of the soul can crack and, and, and separate themselves from the main core of a person. Listen, I know Hollywood has dramatized all this kind of stuff. Hollywood has dramatized split personalities and multiple personality right. disorders. Hollywood has dramatized it to make people believe that it's not real. Right. Mm -hmm. But all that is, is a soul that's been damaged and fragmented from itself. I've seen movies like Three Faces of Eve. Have you ever seen that? I've seen civil. Yeah. Somebody said I live with civil. <laughs> Some of you don't know who civil was. Civil was a woman that had 
16, 17, different personalities. But as they track Sybil's life, Sybil was uh, tormented and abused. And each one of these personalities created themselves to protect her. And, and Hollywood is dramatizing when people say, oh, I ain't nothing to that. Let me tell you something, the Bible talks about this. And what it is, is souls have been fragmented. Souls that have been wounded. And we build a wall as a form of self-protection around that memory and pain. This wall is a false protection and is built upon using lies from the enemy. When a person builds up a wall around themselves, guess what they're doing? They're trying to protect themselves. When a person don't want to deal with another person, guess what they're doing? Try to build a wall, protect themselves. It's not that they're trying to be rude. We got people around here that, I mean, they'll talk to you because they know that they should. <laughs> I'm in church, I'll be nice, but I really don't want to fool with you. So hi and bye. But in reality, they really don't why. Not because they don't like you. Many times it's they build a wall because they've been hurt before. People don't want people to get close. Why? Because they've been hurt before. People don't want people to get in. Why? Because they've been hurt before. Listen, that's a part of life. If you accept the fact that people are going to disappoint you, you will never be disappointed. If you accept the fact that people are flawed and people will hurt you, you can guard yourself against that. Not put a wall behind yourself, but just understand they're human. That's what people do. People say stupid stuff. They do. People say stuff that don't mean, don't mean to come out that way, but they do. And you don't know what they're dealing with at all. They may be dealing with some crazy stuff at all. That's why I take everything in perspective. People say something to me, don't come off right. I say, you know, they may have had a bad day. Somebody may have said something real crazy and it just come out that way. I'm not going to take it personal because you know what? My soul is too valuable to let stuff like that. You learn that stuff after a while. People are people. Yeah. So listen to this. Hollywood has dramatized split personalities. Hollywood is dramatized, multiple personality disorder, that's what they call it. But all that is, is a soul that's been divided from the spirit through trauma and traumatic events. I've seen people come across horrific car accidents. Got a good friend of mine that worked for the Oklahoma City Fire Department. When they had the marrow bombing, he was one of the first on scene, and now he had to go to counseling because it really messed up his mind. Many of them are in counseling right now because, not because they're not the people, it's because they saw something that they were not supposed to see in the natural, and the mind naturally tries to escape it, and, and now they're dealing with it, trying to get things back together. And I've talked to several of them. They said, I saw things that it just messed with my mind so that now I, I, don't, I don't know what to do. It affected my whole life. It affected my family. I can't sleep. And what that is, through trauma, traumatic events, the enemy is trying to bring a separation between soul and spirit. Yeah. Anybody ever ever go through anything that was so traumatic that it messed with your mind? Yeah. It happens. And it don't mean that we don't love God, it doesn't mean that we're less spiritual than us. It's just that we have gone through things. And then when we, we react the way we do to kind of protect our heart, then people say we're funny. Mm -hmm. People say we're unfriendly. No, I love you. I'm just trying to deal with this the best way I know how. God has an answer. A soul can split in half to form separate identities, which is what we see in what psychiatrists call multiple personality disorders, or schizophrenia. This is hopefully due to extremely traumatic events and even self-rejection. In order to be healed, a person will need to relinquish the wall of false protection to Jesus and allow him to take full control. I know mean, some people don't want to give up some of the things because they become comfortable with their pain. Pain can become comfortable. You become comfortable the way you are when Jesus is trying to step in and change it. You don't want to change it. Why? Because you have become comfortable letting that stuff rule you. All right. I've met people who say, you know what? Uh, this pain is all I have. And if I lose it, I don't have nothing. I say, baby, you don't have Jesus. This pain is all I have. I've actually heard people say to me, this is really all I have to hold on to. I said, listen, that is not God's plan for your life. 
But I've met people who, who want to hold on to stuff because they become familiar with it right. and comfortable with it yep. than allow Jesus to deliver them from it. Right. Listen to this. There are many reasons for these hurts and wounds. And I've seen them all. This is where this message comes from. Maybe the parents didn't know how to express love to their children. Maybe they died when the child was young. Or perhaps they physically abandoned them. Maybe they were too harsh, not understanding. Maybe even physically abused or consequently grew up with many emotional scars. I have seen people that have been physically abused as children grow up with so many emotional scars. And then when people don't understand them, and they don't understand their history, they don't understand why they want to act that way. But have you ever met anybody that has been abused as a child? I mean, abused as a child. I'm not talking about, no, you can't go outside and play. I ain't talking about that. <laughs> I'm talking about been physically abused. It breaks my heart when I see someone abuse a child. When I, I hear someone, you, you see on the news, little baby got all kind of blue bruises on them. That breaks my heart. The first thing I want to do, I want to go find that parent. Amen. I have to pray because the first thing I want to do, I want to dig my car and go find them. Amen. Lord knows I don't know what I'm going to do when I find them, but I want to go find them. Breaks my heart. But children that have been physically, emotionally abused, not just physically, but emotionally abused, abused grow up. Emotionally scarred. Yeah. And they come to the house of God and they try to function and people wonder what is wrong with this person. Uh, yes. I know y'all wonder what's wrong with some people. Yeah. But they've been wondering what's wrong with you too. <laughs> <laughs> but especially those that have been abused. Yes. This is what happens. They get emotional scars. But I'm here to tell you no matter what the cause of our hurts Jesus came to heal every last one of them. Amen. And not only heal you, but to make you whole. Who said Amen. Amen. See, it's one thing to be healed and still unwhole. But Jesus came to heal you and to make you whole. Just like those ten lepers, one of them was made whole. The other one was healed. What healing means, the disease stopped right there. Not to progress any further, but you still had the scars. I know sometimes scars are good to show that you're alive. I understand that. But God comes not only to heal you, but make you look like you ain't never been through it. God can make you look like you ain't never. You know what? We've all been through some things, but God can touch your life in such a way that nobody even knows you've been through it. And you don't even smell like smoke. Baby, you've been through the fire and you don't even smell like smoke. still carry the emotional scars. Now, so, all scars are not bad. I got a scar when I went through surgery. I look at it every day and it reminds me how God kept me. All scars are not bad. But here's a question. God want to heal you and remove some of the scars because everybody can't handle your scars. I got a message I'm cooking with. I'm cooking with I got one message I'm still putting some seasoning in there. You know what it's called? I'm going to tell you what it's called. Can you handle my spiritual stretch marks? Come on. Everybody can handle it. Come on. Everybody can handle your stretch marks, baby. But can you handle it? Because that's why some people don't let you see the real deal. Because they got scars and they got stretch marks and they say, oh, I've got to keep this covered. No, when Jesus comes to heal you, he heals all of you. Listen, listen, listen. I can get to the first page. Listen. I'm going to let y'all go so you can enjoy your, your Christmas. Um, I just want to read the scripture to you and then we're going to close. But I have so much more. We haven't even scratched the surface. But when we get through to this, then I'm going to give you a prayer, a pronouncement that we're going to be healed from these soul wounds. But I need to take you through this first. 
Then I'm going to show you how to overcome deep soul wounds. How many of some stuff is deep? Yes. And people put a no vacancy sign on their heart and say, you can't come in. They even close up some places to God so you can't come in. Because some, some wounds are so deep. And people say, Pastor, how can, you, how can you touch on these deep subjects and then make people laugh? There's a reason for that. There's a method to my, my reasoning, and it's because sometimes I say things that bring up memories. I guarantee you some of you are thinking of something right now, of a soul wound that was so deep and so hurting. But then if I, if I give you a little humor, it kind of helps you accept it a little, just a little bit better. Because stuff that I bring up, you have to deal with it very delicately because sometimes if you bring up a, a devastating wound, then the enemy try to jump on that and the enemy try to see, make you think you're not healed from it. No, it's just that God is bringing things to the surface so he can deal with yes, it. Yes, exactly. We got some deep stuff and people act in such a way that you don't understand why. This is some of the reason. People have been wounded in the soul. So when I bring it up, I don't bring it up and just want to leave you there. I'm going to show you how God can deal with it. Amen. That's why I do what I do. Amen. People say, man, you, 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 you're funny. That's why I do what I do. Something I don't even know I'm being funny. It just happens. <laughs> but there's a purpose for it. Amen. Let's look at the scripture and then we're going to close. Jesus used the scripture right here. If you didn't know it, Jesus quoted the Bible. The Old Testament. I was talking to someone uh, the other day, and they, were, they brought up a scripture that Jesus said. And they said, see, Jesus said this. I said, yes, Jesus did say that. And I had to explain something. Why we read what Jesus said. How I many of those are the most important words in the Bible, what Jesus said. But the epistles, Paul and Peter, they, these things help us in the new creation. Jesus, now, let me clarify what I'm about to say. I don't want none of y'all to get a word out of here. Jesus was an Old Testament man. Everything Jesus said was dealing with the Old Covenant. Everything. And when Jesus said, uh, if, if, if someone asks you to forgive them, then you forgive them. When Jesus said, that's Old Covenant. On the New Covenant, whether they ask you or not, we forgive. Whether they ask you or not, we forgive. Because somebody told me what they didn't ask me. That has nothing to do with the New Covenant. You offend me? Whether you ask me or not to forgive you, I've got to forgive you. Yes. The old covenant, they had to ask. They had to ask, please forgive me. Go over here, please forgive me. New covenant, whether you ask me or not, i got to forgive you. Yes. So I told them, I said, Jesus is old covenant. Everything Jesus said was old covenant. Jesus was an old covenant preacher. When he died, he became new covenant. He brought in a new covenant. Amen. And we do things now according to the new covenant. Man. So maybe if they ask you to forgive or not, you still got to. Amen. Don't matter. Right. How I many of some folks freeze over some folks ask you to forgive you? Oh, yeah. So if you wait no folks to ask you, <laughs> they don't do it. You got to anyway. Let's close with this. Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 3. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 to 3. Jesus quoted this scripture, and he was quoted straight out of the Old Testament. And a lot of people didn't realize Jesus quoted the word out of the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 3. This is what Jesus said. Isaiah was prophesying, that's what Jesus was reading. Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord, God, is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Yes. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. I know we got some bound people. Yes. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God and to com comfort all that mourn. To appoint a desire to them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beautiful ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The God of praise for the spirit of happiness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be what? Glorified. Listen, in this one passage scripture that I read, these three verses, 
There are six types of persons that we're going to identify in these verses who need to be set free, who need to be ministered to, who need to be delivered by the hand of God. But first, we've got to identify who they are. And in, in identifying these six persons, you may find yourself in one of them. If you don't find yourself, surely you know somebody who do. Or you know somebody who needs to help in this area. The first one is the poor that Jesus dealt with. Talk about the poor. We're going to discuss who the poor are. I'm not talking about those who don't have money. Because how many of millionaires? Some of them are poor, spiritually yeah. poor. Yeah. Amen. How can you have a billion dollars and want to kill yourself? Yeah. I can't even imagine. Yeah. Give me a couple of hundred, I'm good. <laughs> but you got a billion dollars and want to kill yourself. I don't want to live. I mean, you got a billion dollars. Are you crazy? <laughs> but how many of money can't buy happiness? But it can buy everything else you need. We're going to talk about the poor. We're going to talk about the broken hearted. How many ever had a broken heart? There is nothing like a broken heart. I mean, you may have all the money, you may have all the fame, but when you have a broken heart, you don't want to eat, you don't want to sleep. Now listen, if you had a broken heart because of a relationship, trust me that it will turn. It may seem like you're going to die, but how to know you will live again. It may seem like you're going to die, but maybe there's another one around the corner. Can I get a minute? But there's nothing like a broken heart when you lose yeah. a child. Amen. When a child walks away from you. Yes. When, I mean, some things, some things you will get over, then there's something that takes God. Yes. Amen. Listen, God can heal you from a broken relationship, but many times he just walk with you through it. And he'll say, baby, the sun will shine again. But when you lose a child, can nobody do nothing for you but God. Yes. Yes. People will try to understand, people will try to console you, but there is no consolation yes. without the peace of God. Yes. There is none. We've had people in this church of lost children. You try to save them, you try, but you cannot. They cannot be comforted by any natural means. It takes the spirit of God to heal that broken heart. Yes. That's what he said he comes to do. Then you have the captives. We're going to talk about the captive, those that are bound by chains. Then we, we, Jesus identified the prisoners. Mm -hmm. Just because you ain't behind bars, that don't mean you ain't locked up. There are people locked up right now in their minds. You think it's just because you're in McAllister. You're not in Grant. You're not in Lexington. You're not in Joseph Hart. So that's how you know all the names. <laughs> That's another story, crazy. <laughs> Just because you're not in none of them, don't mean you're in your friends. <laughs> then he talked about the mourners. Mm -hmm. Those that mourn, yes. those that have lost those people that I talked about. Yes. But there's a point where we know we mourn un, uh, you know, in unnatural ways. Yes. Nobody can set a time for your mourning. All right. Amen. But I do tell you, there is a time, and Jesus came to heal it. Yeah. So, the poor, the brokenhearted, the captives, the prisoners, the mourning, and then the warriors. He dealt with all those, those that mourn. He dealt with the warriors. How many know that some people worry when they got nothing to worry about? Come on, man. Come on. Worry. Worry. Worry, 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 worry. <laughs> Let me come back. <laughs> I got to deal with these. And once I deal with it, I do want you to know there's a prayer, a pronouncement that is spoken over you. And Jesus came to heal every last one of them. And I know I brought up some things today. But you know what? They're good sometimes to lay them before the sun. Yes, so that he can deal with them. And I've seen people come out from things that they've been struggling with for years. I've seen this message. Sometimes you had to hear this message two or three times. Before really it begins to take its effect on your home. That's why I mention things sometimes over and over until you begin to. Because sometimes you have to hear things over and over. Yes. Sometimes I tell people, take the CD, listen to it over and over. Because that word will get in your heart and establish faith in your heart. So you can take the stand and say, this is my day. 
I'm going to let that go. I'm going to let the one who abused me, I'm going to forgive them. I know some people are dead gone that have abused you, and they can't come back and say, forgive me, but you can release them. Because I said before, and I'll say it again, forgiveness is not for the other person. Forgiveness is for you. Because you don't want to carry that. It takes too much energy. Come on, stand your feet. Time to go. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.